Hey all, welcome back to this second video of the uh, Zeta FX61 build, my Phantom Flying Wing. Uh, this is the second part, the first part was all the gluing and the installation of the servos etc. In this one here we're going to be doing the motor, the ESC and whatever else it takes and we'll try and see if we can get the thing running for a bit. So sit back and enjoy. So we're going to start with the motor assembly here. Uh, I'm going to glue the plastic mount on and uh, also the uh, foam motor cover will um, go on top. Okay so first we'll do uh, uh, is um, install this timber plate to the back of the motor mount. So we'll stick some glue on the plastic motor mount first and then we'll install the the uh, bit of plywood backing plate that goes over that, that we screw into. So we clean all the excess glue off the motor mount and the, and the timber uh, backing plate. Like I said, there's a uh, there's a specific way this motor mount goes in, as you can see the there's one edge that sticks out further than the other. And I actually didn't realise this and glued it in, so it's a little bit messy, so I apologise for the bit of a mess we've done there. Not going to alter anything. So at the top here you've got no lip, and at the bottom you'll have a lip. That's the only way it can go. The lip is to the bottom of the fuselage, and that way your top, uh, your top piece of um, the motor cover will fit on on properly so basically when you've got your motor mounted up to your motor mount your wires will be sitting on the bottom which is where the lip is so we'll just screw in the screws now to, to tighten up the motor onto the back of the mount and then we'll glue we'll glue it all together motor's all screwed up, I've got four screws in the motor mount, I'm going to just test this just to make sure everything's all good before I glue it up again. Everything fits a lot better, like I said you've got a lip on the motor mount that has to go to the bottom of the fuselage, as, as do your wires when they come out, they need to be on the bottom of that as well. So that fits okay, so we'll get into gluing it up now, plenty of glue right the way around, don't be shy again. Last thing you need is this to come loose. Once you're happy with the amount of glue you've got on there, gently push the motor and motor mount down into its recesses. Again, I'll leave this sit overnight once I've glued it all together. So now that that's pushed down, I'm going to put plenty of glue over the top of it all now. So now the glue is all done, I'm going to put the top cover back on and let this sit overnight again. We'll just give it a quick clean up. Any excess glue that's hanging around we'll get rid of. This uh, glue I got, I got from Bunnings and it dries clear, it does, so you won't see any of it. So we'll just apply a bit of pressure to this just to make sure the glue's all squashed in and everything's going to get a good grip. And I'll, like I said, I'll let this one sit overnight before we do any more to it. Alright, so next we've got to do the ESC. This is a 50 amp ESC, a hobby wing ESC. What I need to do is change the Dean's plugs on the end and replace them with these two, with this XT60 plug uh, first, which work, works with my batteries. For me, I think the Dean's plugs are very old school. I much prefer the XT60, so cut off these very simple solder job just to put the two on I 
Okay, so the two wires now have taken off the plastic off the end, so what we'll do is tin up the bare wires with some solder and prepare it for the XT60 connector. Uh, it's a lot easier doing this too if you've got a set of uh, helping hands, I call it. Uh, they hold the wire for you. Um, I'm just a bit lazy to do that at the moment and not in not easily accessible in my garage So I'm just gonna bear with it this way So plenty of solder in there and uh, that's all done the two wires are now tinned So next step now we'll get some solder into the connector um, I you'd normally use this I'll use the uh, Couldn't get my helping hands for those two wires, but I could get my um, My little clamp that I've got which is very handy and holding these connectors. Little jig. A little jig I bought from Hobby King. Very good investment. So next we'll get the uh, solder into the connectors. Plenty of solder in there. Just be careful not to heat, heat it up too much because you can melt the plastic. So put enough in there. I try and fill them up near the top. So a little trick if, little trick if, um, just to stop the connectors from moving in the plastic, if you get it too hot, just plug the other end in and it holds it all together. So don't forget your black cap to go over your wires and double check, make sure before you solder that your wires are all, that you're soldering the right wire on the right connector as well. So you don't want to have that crossing at all when you plug it in. Again, we'll heat up the solder and the connector there and drop the black wire in. And do the same to the red wire and push up the connector and our XT60 connector will be ready to plug in. Okay, so we've, re we've uh, installed the motor and, put, and glued the motor cowling on top. Uh, we've also changed the connector, the Dean's connector off the ESC and put on a XT60 connector to suit the battery that I'm going to put in. Now we'll just put in the, we'll, we'll connect up the ESC now to the motor. I'm not going to, I'm not going to install it, hard install it in just yet. It's just going to be sitting floating and we might just test it all out. We'll hook up the L9R long range receiver as well and then we'll just give it a bit of a, a test run just to see how everything works. So this receiver, um, although it's quite a good receiver, it's got some range of up to three to four kilometers I believe from what I've seen. Um, I've never used it before but I'm, I'm almost thinking I might not even use it in this machine at the moment I'm looking at getting into the crossfire long range which which gets you even further it's quite expensive but it's it's something I wouldn't mind testing out I might even put this receiver here in a in a quad build that I'm doing at the moment my battery it's it's going to be a uh, three or four cell I'm not sure probably a, a this is a three cell four four thousand milliamp battery but I can run up to a four cell, which I probably will end up doing. I've got quite a few batteries yet. I haven't made that decision. So the positioning of all the components in here, including the battery, is going to take a bit of testing. Uh, the, you need to keep the center of gravity fairly even, and on this on this wing here, it's the center, it's the spar that's running through that I'm holding. That's basically a center of gravity. It's got to be balanced there for the for the wing to fly correctly. And because I'm going to add in a GPS compass eventually and a flight controller for it, I've got a flight controller coming, which will be installed later on. Um, it's going to be a bit of trial and error and testing here. I might even put a false floor on top there with a bit of balsa wood to um, install the flight controller up the top with the battery maybe. We'll see. We'll do a bit of... We'll have a bit of playing around with all that side of it to keep it all neat and tidy and free of any any bad signals. So another little trick I've I've uh, found is uh, they recommend to put a little bit of put a smear of hot glue 
like a light smear of hot glue um, in the hinge part of the aileron. You can either do this or you can put tape on top of the aileron to hold it together because it is a weak point. So I just got a bit of plastic and just give the outside corners a bit of a smear of hot glue to stop to stop any ripping and and help with the wear and tear over over time. And just a light smear of hot glue on both edges is all you need to do. And make it make it very thin. You don't need to, to you don't want to make it too thick, or else it will cause the flap to uh, have a few problems going up and down if it's too thick. So keep it thin, and it'll stop it from tearing. So we're just repeating the process for the other side, I'm using a prop just to give it a quick smear with the while the glue is hot. Alright so the wings have all been sitting overnight like I said in the last video. Uh, the control horn on the servo itself, uh, the, the rod that connects the aileron to the servo, it fits in the control horn on the aileron but the servo horn um, you'll need to drill out a hole. The holes are too small in that to, for it to clip in. So they need to be drilled. So the setup for the receiver is very basic. Um, as you can see you've got channel 1 is from your servos, servo 1. Uh, channel 2 is servo 2 and channel 3 is your ESC. So what we might do next, I'm going to just temporarily fix these stabiliser so it stabilized sections on top of the fuselage. I'm not going to glue them in yet. We're going to put the craft together. I'll put the wings on and then I'll I'll connect the the um, receiver up and we'll give it a, a test spin just to see how everything powers up. So I'll pass the servo wire through the uh, through the gap where it fits and connect the first wing left hand wing up on the spar and that clips pretty much just clips in then you've, you've, you do have to still screw it in from the bottom eventually but I'm not going to do that just yet I'm just going to just going to clip it in so you need to loosen the little retaining uh, clip here to get the spar and the wing connected up so just lift that up a little bit you don't have to take it off just undo the screw a bit and we'll take the servo lead as well and that will that will fit into the to the fuselage and the whole thing just clips in pretty simply like that. So I'll just tighten up the retaining clips here just so that the wings stay on and all is solid. You can see the two timber little balsa pieces in front of the screwdriver there. They're the other screws you'll have to tighten up to secure the wing properly. Um, the stabilise the stabilizers there on the wings will be glued in like I said earlier and I'm going to tape all the all the wires into its little recesses as well. At this stage I want to stick them through we'll put the extensions on the servo leads and hook up the servos into the receiver and the ESC into the receiver and we'll give it a bit of a test and just see how it powers up. So channel 1, 2 and 3 is what you'll need. Servo 1 plugs into channel 1 which is uh, on the left hand side of the craft. Servo 2 is the right hand server on the craft, plugs into channel 2 and the, and the ESC plugs into channel 3. So we'll, we'll push the extensions out into the wings for each servo and connect up the servos. We'll push the servo wires into the recesses in the bottom of the wings and eventually put some clear tape over that to hold them in and plug up the servo wire to the extension. So we'll just run a, run a little bit of clear packing tape over the, over the recessed wire just to keep it in place. All runs in, all fits in very, very neatly, which is quite good. All I've got to do next is drill the hole in the servo horn 
which I'll have to get another drill bit for that. I haven't got one small enough. I probably will need a, about a one millimetre bit by the look. The holes in the servo horns are extremely small and you really need to double that size of the hole that's in the horn for the, uh, for the arm to fit in. That goes into your aileron. So that's uh, the packing tape all done, nice and neat. Right, so now that everything's connected up, ready to go, we'll just put things out of the way. We'll put the uh, battery in and we'll give it a bit of a, a bit of a power up and see how it sounds. So I've already bound up the Tyrannus to the L9R. I did that off screen. Simple procedure. And you don't know how to do it, just follow some of the videos on YouTube. There's plenty out there. And there we go. We power it up, put the battery on and it's running. I've got to set up the uh, the servos are uh, correct at the moment, so there's going to be a little bit of testing there just to set that up properly. I think I've got to set it up through the radio as a fixed wing, not as a drone, which I think it's set up as the mo at, at, as the mo at the moment. But everything works. Ailerons aren't connected again yet because I've still got to do the holes in the, in the servo horns. But other than that, everything works. Motor power's up fine. And it's running at the moment just on 3S. So that's basically everything set up now that you get in the box ready to fly. If you really want to fly it as it is, you can. I'm not going to because I want to wait until I get my flight controller in and a few other bits and pieces. Like a, uh, I want to get the Crossfire set up for it for long range flying. And I've got to mount a camera in it as well and a video transmitter. So there's still a bit of work to do yet. So this is the FX61 all put together and its size, it's quite big, one and a half metres in uh, wingspan. It has a bigger brother than this too, which is the Buffalo, an FX79, I believe it is. And that's a bit bigger again, but this is a good one to start with, I think. And I'm very keen to see how it flies and eventually test it out so I can do some good long range flying in it. Hope you enjoyed this build, stay tuned for the next one which will come in time when I get my flight controller and all the other bits and pieces and we'll set it up through uh, one of the software programs, uh, whatever the flight controller comes with. Until then we'll see you later, hey, bye.